Welcome to the AWE Breakfast Show, featuring Ring x -Line. Here's your host, Sean Hannum. Good morning. Welcome to the AWE Breakfast Show. It's Monday morning. My name's Sean Hannum. I'm a freelance journalist. I specialise in writing about tech, retail and music. And I've been in the consumer electronics industry for more than 20 years. That's why I have a very long grey beard. And I'm your host for this week's AWE Breakfast Show sessions at EI Live Interactive. So as part of this virtual week-long event for the home tech sector, I'll be talking to industry representatives from brands including Sony, Ring, URC, Epson, Denon, Marantz and Definitive Technology from Sound United, LG, and of course, AWE, managed to get all those out in one go. We'll be holding an interactive Q&A session with our guests towards the end of this session. There will be the chance for you, the viewers, all listeners to send in your questions to the panel during the show. So get thinking about your questions already. We've got half an hour. To do this, you need to maximize your computer screen and go to the viewers control panel on the webinar platform. There you can submit the questions during the show and we'll discuss them with the panel towards the end of the session. Now for this morning's first half an hour session, Delighted to say I'm joined by Todd Towie, who's National Account Manager for Ring Installed Solutions, and Stuart Tickle, Managing Director of AWE. And this morning we're talking smart security and Ring X-Line. We're going to find out all about the products in the market and discover how integrators can unlock the potential of smart security. See what I did there? That's why they're paying me the big bucks. Right, well, good morning. Hi, Todd, and hi, Stuart. Good morning. And uh, how are you both doing? Morning. Now, Todd, uh, you're joining us from San Francisco, just in the Bay Area of America, San Francisco. Uh, what time is it over there at the moment? Uh, one o'clock in the morning. Uh, and have you been to bed yet? Nope. I just uh, figured I'd make it all the way through. Just a straight shot. And uh, have you been to bed yet, Stuart? <laughs> Where are you calling us from this morning? Where are you phoning in from? Um, that'll be Epson in uh, in Surrey, and yeah, I'd, in in the spirit of um, you know reaching across the pond, I stayed up all night too. <laughs> so uh, I was going to before we uh, before we dial down and then listen to and talk about some of the, the the issues this morning and some of the products. Let's just ask you a bit about your background. So Todd, uh, how long have you been in the CE industry, and uh, what's your background, you know, in tech, and also how long have you been at Ring? You got it. Uh, let's see. So I've been in the, the CD industry, uh, the custom install world, uh, for about 17 years. I uh, started out uh, in power management with uh, Panamax and Furman and uh, core brands, uh, as well as uh, the architectural speaker world uh, with uh, Sonance. And I've been at Ring now uh, just about three years. Okay. And Stuart, how long have you been in the CE industry? You started out in retail, actually, didn't you, before you moved into the distribution side of things? Yeah, I was I was Saturday boy in my dad's shop, um, which was a hi-fi shop in Thornton Heath. So, um, yeah, when I was doing my exams at school, I was uh, working Saturdays and um, I remember £2.75 per hour was the negotiated rate that I uh, um, worked for. And um, like yeah, we spent now. most of that on a spent most of that on a pizza at lunchtime each each weekend. I remember you've doubled that since, haven't you? You yeah. Easily, easily, yeah. I would say yeah. probably three or four times. To do, you know, we have to at least do minimum wage. Yeah, two pizzas. Actually, we should send maybe send out for pizzas now. I'm just, I haven't had breakfast yet. So, um, let's find out a bit more about Ring. So, can you give us a bit of a background on the company? It's actually owned by Amazon, isn't it? It is. Uh, it was started in uh, 2013 by uh, Jamie Siminoff. Uh, he invented Ring out of his garage. Uh, the idea of having a sort of a caller ID. Uh, for the front door um, and uh, with the singular mission really quite frankly of uh, making neighborhoods safer uh, and that uh, that mission transcends throughout the organization um, but yeah Ring is uh, a little over two years ago was purchased by Amazon. And whereabouts is Ring based in the States? It's based in Los Angeles. Uh, Santa Monica is where the headquarters is although we are opening up a brand new uh, headquarters in Hawthorne uh, California but in the LA area. What's the HQ like? It, cameras ring doorbells everywhere, but you can't sneak up on it. There's no chance of uh, going up there in the morning and trying to uh, break your way in, is there? No chance. And Stuart, what's it like at um, uh, AWE headquarters? And can you tell us a little bit more about um, the history and the background of AWE? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so to say, we're, we're based in Epsom now and weather is bright and breezy, um, very much like myself. And it's... <laughs> 
we, we started in Thornton Heath, though. Um, that was my great granddad 85 years ago. So we're, we're 80, celebrating 85 years this year. And we've got a um, promotional loyalty campaign and things running for CI integrators. But um, that was radio menders. So that's what they did. Um, obviously, quite a lot has happened since then. And I'm not just talking 2020. There's World War and all sorts of things that went on. But we've evolved. We've not just survived. We've thrived. We're now um, uh, kind of bigger than... Um, we have ever been in our history, but we're still a fully privately owned family business. Um, yeah, got a great team here. Um, yeah, I'm honoured to be at the head of it. Great. So we're here to talk about Ring X Line. So earlier this year, ADO, we became UK distributor for Ring X Line. So Todd, can you tell us a bit more about the products that are available to integrators via AWE and what's kind of so special about them and why are they suitable for the home integration market? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And uh... Uh, we developed the X line uh, for the fact that we wanted to give uh, dealers and technology integrators a differentiated or an enhanced offering uh, from that of products uh, that are available throughout uh, retail and online. Um, so that's what it, that's what we're trying to accomplish is give the dealer something that's uh, enhanced, that's different, um, and that's what we've really accomplished with the X line. Great. So can you talk us through some of the products that are available to? Um retailers and home integrators in uh, via AWE. So some of the highlights of the range and, and which products can integrators get their hands off on through AWE. Yeah, you bet. So doorbell. So we have three different doorbells that are a part of the X line. Uh, so the Ring Video Doorbell 3 Plus, that would have a battery option. Uh, so in case there is no wiring, uh, we have a Pro X, uh, and that is uh, for low voltage between uh, 16 and 24 volts. And then the Elite Doorbell, which is uh, a POE option. And then we turn. Uh, we turn that. What does POE mean for people who who aren't uh, into into the tech speak? Great. I'm glad you uh, asked me to clarify that. So POE is a power over Ethernet. Uh, okay. So it, uh, that is a way to power a device um, as well as direct uh, direct hardwire into the network as well. Okay. That sounds uh, yeah, that's useful. I guess because one of the uh, questions I was going to ask you is obviously there's a wired option as you say in the range but a lot of uh, you know uh, and a wireless option as well a lot of integrators will go for the wired option but why do you offer the wireless option as well can you explain a little bit about thinking behind that yeah no and I agree uh, I think whenever possible you definitely would want a hard wire I think that it gives the best experience for the end user uh, our neighbors um, but we also want to offer a, a wireless option and battery option uh, for places that maybe aren't you're not able to get a cable too so it just gives you a, just another uh, more variety in which you're able to offer ring solutions uh, again to places you might not be able to run cable okay and there are bundles available aren't there Stuart um, to customers of AWE in the UK can you talk us a little bit about that and there's also a ring protect basic subscription warranty for four years isn't there well I mean yeah, the answer's in the question there, Sean. It's, um, it's, it's as though you've done at least a week of research. Um, <laughs> uh, but you, you're correct. The way Ring described the um, X-Line products is, is as a bundle, and that, that is a premium Ring product, um, but that comes bundled with the four-year warranty, um, but crucially, a lifetime uh, subscription to um, what they call their basic protection plan, which gives you cloud storage, um, so all, all ring devices give you access to live view, um, but live view is is only useful for a limited amount. So the value of the subscription of the, the protect plan is huge. Um, so actually, one of the really interesting points there is that uh, because that is all bundled in the retail uh, price, it's a, it's a huge benefit for the consumer because there's no need and the integrator. You don't need to put in credit card details and have a monthly subscription. So once you buy an X line product, it's it's all there for the basically the reasonable lifetime of the device. Um, and it, it's amazing how quick you get used to that functionality of having all the um, stored events and history uh, that you can just skip back to. In the in the home security market, we've had kind of DOI products, you know, off the shelf solutions at the at the bottom end of the market that have been quite popular. Um, we've also got you know products at the very very top of the market, the very premium end. So where does kind of Ring X line sit in the market? Do you want to tell us a little bit more about that, Todd? Yeah, um, where we sit in the market, right? So we aspire uh, to have products that are you know seen as high end, right? Uh, and I think that's really what uh, dealers can uh, deliver when they install Ring. 
is the ability to have like the seamless integration into not only other products. Um, sorry, um, you know, to, to, to install other products and, and integrate with them, but have the seamless uh, interaction with whether it's a doorbell or security camera um, as well. One of the things I wanted to ask is, do you think that customers are confused or consumers are confused about home security products? Do you think they need integrators to help them overcome that? We talked earlier about DOI off the shelf solutions, you know, kind of cheap, cheaper products that are accessible to a lot of people. But um, is there kind of a fear about home security products? Do people need to be educated more about what's available to them and how they can be installed in the home? You know, yeah, um, go ahead. I mean, if, I grab, if I grab that one, it is. Yeah. It's clear that DIY, well, home security is a massive growth area of consumer electronics um, and smart security is part of what is driving that. And part of that is because there has been cheap products for a long time, um, but generally they still have involved wires and the wireless stuff has not really been up to scratch. It's very cheap and it's a bit flaky. And the, the nature of anything like that is that you get the early adopters who will the, the sort of DIY people and the enthusiasts who are more than happy to have this tech in their home and they will maintain it and do it themselves and there's generally a main person in the household who, who drives that. Um, but the vast majority of people um, don't now have a fully wired top end alarm and CCTV system. But try and think how many of your friends do you know that have that? Um, and you know we're in the tech industry so um, we're ring is sitting is um, that perfect blend. You've got high-end functionality, but at a, at a more affordable price. Um, but actually, it's that do-it-for-me market that is bursting uh, with growth at the moment. And it's people, as soon as you talk about, you know, having basically video feeds of your family, um, you know, be that just outdoor space, or if you choose to have that indoor um, is, is an option. And um, to have a professional do that for you is an essential part of the fact you need to know that your network is secure. You need to know that you have a trusted partner if um, you know you need to make that call and so on. Yeah, uh, one of the things we want to highlight is the um, kind of the user interface and the ease of use and the advantages of the Ring app. Can you tell us a bit about that, Todd? Yeah, um, the app is very intuitive, and I think that's really what uh, you know. I'm really proud of working for Ring um, and the fact that the effort that's been made uh, on the user interface. Um, where I think a dealer, and to, to touch upon what Stuart had said, was that you know an integrator can help you know put uh, connect the devices together, um, so that way if my um, security camera senses motion, I could have another camera then record its linked devices. And to be able to set motion zones appropriately so that, you know, I, if some uh, if a leaf were to fall, for example, or if something a deer were to walk by, uh, I don't care per se, but if I want it to be people only, in other words, I'm able as an integrator to make that step. And I think that's really what we're the end user, our neighbors are looking for help um, from a uh, professional installer is to make sure that it's all seamlessly integrated and set up in the right way. I think I just saw a deer walk past my house then while you were you were saying about that. Yeah, yeah. I think there's more chance it's, of a leaf falling outside of my house than a deer, or, or maybe a fox in the middle of the night or something, yeah, or a next door neighbour's cat. Um, one of the well, things probably, we, I want to highlight probably an old deer, might, an old deer <laughs> might have wandered deer, past yeah. on yeah, the way I to. Live, I, do live, I do live in leafy Buckinghamshire. Um, so what about the functionality with other products? So can Ring be connected to other products, like for example a smart TV? Yes, so that is uh, some of the exciting uh, development that we have with integration partners uh, like Sony, um, and we also work within Samsung as well and their uh, and their smart home uh, television. So we're excited about the opportunity to you know to further investigate uh, third party relationships, especially on the display side, uh, but to be able to you know talk to your TV like Sony and say hey you know, who's at my front door and to be able to see who's at the front door and have conversations. Uh, it's a compelling uh, integration message. I think you're selling it to me, definitely. One of the reasons I want to invest in uh, Ring X-Line is because uh, it will tell me when I can intercept my Amazon delivery driver so I can get to him before my wife uh, gets to him. And she will, otherwise, she won't find out how many records I've been buying during the week. I can I can intercept him before the packages get through the door and she spots another Amazon the delivery. That's uh, that's that's got to yeah. be a, a key. Like, while the mission is to think, uh, make neighborhoods safer, it uh, it does help uh, to uh, you know to have a safer packages delivered. So 
there is an additional benefit for sure. <laughs> Just yeah, I'm, not sure, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure, Sean, you'll be looking forward to the drone delivery, so that that skylight behind you, your special delivery instructions can be, yeah, <laughs> approached from the back of the house and drop it through the skylight. Yeah, we are going live from the man cave, and there are lots of records up here, so that could be, yeah, straight to the man cave from outside. There's no need to get involved with the porch or the uh, the front door. Good idea. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask, we talked about integrating with with other products like smart TVs, but how does Ring X Line integrate with control systems that are out there in the market? Which one of you wants to tell us about that? Todd or Stuart? I'll jump in and then Stuart can uh, can go from there. We uh, we just announced, we're excited, we just announced a partnership with Lutron. So, uh, for example, on their raw to select platform, uh, we have the ability now to, um, if, light, if our cameras uh, or doorbell senses motion or is pressed, uh, you can integrate certain actions from that of Lutron lighting. Um, so again, someone's at my front door, I could turn on my interior lights, my porch lights. Um, there's a variety of different things you could do to integrate. So for Lutron would be uh, something we've just announced and are really excited to, to bring that uh, to market. Uh, and the other one is Savant, uh, a home automation platform uh, that now natively integrates Ring into their platform. So those are just uh, two examples um, for integration. And I know we're always looking uh, to see uh, who we could partner with next and what makes sense for our neighbors. So, uh, but yeah, no, uh, integration is a big thing, uh, especially for uh, technology integrators who are looking to, you know, deliver that, uh, that concierge level of service, certainly. Yeah, we've talked a lot about the kind of uh, the, the tech and the USPs and the products. So uh, I, I want to sort of dial, dial down a bit, ring, dial down. I just made a joke and I didn't even realize. Um, why should integrators consider kind of moving into home security? I want to talk now about some of the bigger issues in the industry around home tech and home security. So do you think it's a kind of nat a, a natural step for someone who installs home intimation, AV and home cinema to make the next jump into home security? Stuart, do you want to take that one? Yeah, sure. And I, c I can tie in a bit with your previous question as well, because um, the, yeah, the traditional custom install market, um, yeah, if you're looking at CDA research, you're saying there's about 1,200 integrators, so 1,000 to 1,500 integrators operating on that kind of level. And those are the, those are the companies who are doing the full integration uh, with third-party devices and things. But the, the real exciting and growth area is the mid-market. So that by no means rules out the top end and that full integration um, as, as has been shown is, is coming. But even now, what you get is there's a lot of consumer devices that have made success uh, within the integration channel, but they haven't had the, well, basically the framework around them. They're consumer devices that are being successful because frankly, they're better than what the pro more expensive versions are like. And you can look at products like Sonos and say a lot of integrators use it um, just because it's a better product. Um, you know, whether they can make a living out of that product in isolation is another matter. Um, but the, the great thing about X-Line is that it is a, a, an accredited dealer only product. So it is only for integrators. It comes with extra benefits. But actually, it's got the mass market of the consumer range behind it. It's TV advertised, radio advertised. Every day, I I've, um, you know, hear several radio adverts on my way to or from work um, on, on the big networks. And it's very compelling. And so how many products are in our industry where where professional integrators can actually, you know, properly retain and add value and have a unique offering from a line that has the the development behind it and the marketing that only a company like sort of Amazon and Ring can bring. So you've got that side of it. You've also got the fact that smart security is a big growth area. Um, so I think it was um, uh, just shy of 60% growth in in 2019. Um, and I'm sure that's accelerated in 2020. So it's a big opportunity for new revenue. And anyone that's basically crossing a threshold and doing a, a, an installation in, in a customer's home that involves electronic equipment, this, you know, this is a, a viable product. But the AV uh, companies, have sometimes shied away because you know they're not they're not certified for the kind of police registered type alarm systems but most people just want the facility and the functionality they're happy to self monitor they just want to know their family is safe and their property is safe and yeah. and to be frank just answer the door when they're not there to get that record delivery in um, without <laughs> the wife knowing 
I was going to pick you up on that. You said that the, the home security market is growing. Uh, what effect do you think that COVID has had on the smart security market? Maybe one for you, Todd. Surely now we're all spending more time at home. Does that mean we're not as concerned as, as things like remote access and monitoring? Uh, are you kind of worried about the impact of COVID on the smart home security market? Todd, what, what's your kind of ring's take on that? Yeah, no, we are. I mean, we're certainly worried about it. Uh, COVID has changed a lot for uh, a lot of people all around the world. So we want to you know, make sure that uh, we, we deliver solutions that can help uh, in a contactless approach, right? So that's one of the things that we highlight in uh, with a ring doorbell is now we can see who's at the door. Um, and so we may not have to go uh, and talk to that person. We can do it remotely. Um, so that is something that it rings, you know, we're, we're, co we're cognizant of, but at the same time, uh, we think our solutions actually can help uh, during this time of COVID. I guess more people are spending time at home, as I said, and, and maybe looking at home improvements, home security. People want to make sure that loved ones who don't live near them, such as vulnerable family members, older you know, teenagers or friends are safe. So I guess retailers can, can capitalise on that as well, Stuart, can't they? It's a good opportunity to kind of uh, make the best out of a, a worrying situation. So this this is actually a huge thing. Um, you know, how many how many elderly relatives were wanting this technology in their homes? Uh, before you know there was a there was a little bit of a fear factor or just a nonchalance about no I, I don't want to be on video I, I don't I don't want this and actually now just having um, the way the way ring is set up you can easily share a video feed with chosen people so it's an, it's all everything's encrypted and it's the highest level of storage uh, in, um, you know uh, available and that's something Todd can give us more detail on but if you choose to shoot share a video feed with uh, for example um, a family member a um, good example would be having a, a video doorbell or security cam uh, on uh, you know maybe an elderly parent's home um, when you're setting that up for them um, or when the integrator is setting it up they could um, give permission for that video feed to be shared and what that means is things like, you know, just knowing that, um, you know, your your mum or dad has, um, you know, left and come back the house, uh, from the house. Um, you know, you're not necessarily sharing all the indoor video feeds. That's something that is an option you can set within alarm status uh, on the app, whether you do or don't share any indoor video at any point. But, uh, you know, just outdoor, knowing that, you know, when mum who's in your bubble came over and visited the family earlier, she's gone back and she has got home. Um, you know, that's something that is there just built in now. And people are much more open to that type of thing than they ever were before. Peace of mind. Yeah, just an additional peace of mind, really. I mean, that's really what that uh, what that offers. And, you know, just to recapture on some of that is, you know, our, the security aspect is really top concern for Ring. So we do, you know, encrypt our the private videos a restricted video access, right? Um, that type of stuff as well as we were the first in the industry to have the two-step uh, authentication as well. So um, we, it, concern uh, is very much top of, uh, top of our mind for, uh, for security for sure. Where do you see the market heading in the future? I know you guys can't tell us too much about what's on the horizon, but uh, where do you see the smart security market going in, in a post-COVID world? I think it's absolutely home security is in its infancy. Uh, I think there's a lot more on the horizon that can be done. Um, Stuart alluded to it, but our uh, uh, our camera that is an autonomous flying, uh, always home cam, and autonomously flying uh, you know, security camera throughout the home that has you know predetermined paths. So you could have it go by a stove. Did I leave a stove on? Uh, did I leave a window open? That type of stuff. So. Um, we're certainly, uh, you know, doing a lot of research and development to, you know, to stay ahead of it. But I think ultimately the home security market is absolutely in its infancy and there'll be a ton more uh, developed and really look forward to, uh, to what the future holds with home security. Cool. Amazing. We've only got yeah. about five minutes, five minutes left. But um, I'm going to before we go over to the questions from um, from some of the viewers uh, that we're going to get um, sent in. I want to ask you, I'm going to ask you all the guests during the week a couple of quick fire question so we've talked about the effects of covid you know uh and being a lot you know, spending a lot of time at home i'm still on lockdown here in the uk as is Stuart. are you on lockdown todd in um, san francisco what's the situation at the moment we are um yeah. we fluctuated between uh lockdown and having certain restaurants open at you know a 10 percent capacity um but now we are uh, outdoor dining only uh you know uh, take home uh so yeah we are very much uh, still in this lockdown uh mode as well 
what have you been guys been doing to pass the time um, when you're at home? I was going to ask, have you seen any good films or TV recently? Todd, what's been uh, keeping you occupied in, in the San Francisco Bay Area during the uh, long hours of lockdown? Well, I, uh, I actually love uh, uh, war movies and movies about war as a history buff myself. So uh, just recently been watching like Full Metal Jacket and uh, yeah. uh, the series of Band of Brothers, uh, yeah. things like that that I've probably been um kind of binge watching so to speak but yeah no that's where i've probably paid my attention and then on the outside of that just uh barbecue uh something i got a smoker uh so now i'm uh, trying to get a little better at the uh the barbecue side of me i guess you've been barbecuing in uh, epsom as well stuart have you in uh, mid-november ideal barbecue well, weather isn't it <laughs> funny enough i have it sounds like me and todd need to get together because i've been watching 1917 um this time of year the great escape is one of my favorites um just just uh get that back <laughs> out and and I've got, a, I've got a kadai uh i've got a kadai which is like this big bowl kind of barbecue where um with a hanging bowl on it so you i've, I've been barbecuing curries cool. which is quite that sounds, that sounds great i think i'm losing out here. i need to go and watch the war films and have a barbecue i think um now we've got a few minutes left so i want to um ask uh james uh drummy at aw he's going to come over now and um just uh, tell us we had any questions in from the i can't don't decide whether they're viewers or listeners i'm going to say listeners stroke viewers um so james um what Do kind that. of questions have we got any questions or what kind of questions yeah. have we been asked this morning i've got one here uh, um delwyn's asking um do you guarantee the range will never be sold on amazon i presume he's talking about the x line range rather than the standard ring so i can i can talk from my side because i'm not sure how much um obviously our direct contacts at uh ring are uh, the same senior management that are um, uh, representing uh, Ring in the States as well. Um, so I guess this is a question that relates to the Cedia Propel um, uh, announcement. And um, all I can say from our side is that um, we've been uh, assured that from a UK perspective, um, that absolutely is not happening. Um, and uh, there's there's a regional approach to the different different areas, but it, X Line is definitely an accredited dealer only uh, product. That actually yeah. brings me on to uh, my question, which is, um, how do you become an X Line dealer? Um, again, it's probably easy for me to jump in. So, yeah. um, from our point of view, if you actually want to and you haven't, you can go to the connect.awe website, and there's a uh, um, an, um, an X Line story on there which you can link through but basically uh, i'm not sure if we can post a link or anything like that i'm not sure how this thing works but um, basically you click and you apply awe pre-approve you access uh, so we verify your installer status um, and you get access to the ring um, dealer portal um, which lets you go through the training um, but basically you need to be an awe dealer and do the online certification um, we do all the verification of uh, installation ability and so on. And uh, it's a pretty straightforward online process um, that you can uh, go ahead with. Great. And there's training available as well, which you mentioned the training, isn't there, for support for dealers as well, integrators? Yeah, so there's um, online training, which is part of the accreditation program, but AWE um, are also, uh, we've got an introduction course that we run now, which is free. It's a 30 minute intro, um, but we are currently developing um, deeper, um, sort of more advanced level training as well, um, which will become more relevant as the product range uh, develops because, um, yeah, any, any integrator worth their salt can get the head around the, the, the existing range. Um, pretty swiftly, um, but we have got direct tech support from AWE as well. Great. Well, we're coming up to the end of the show, actually, guys. That's gone really quickly. So uh, I'd like to say thanks to my guests, um, Todd Towie from um, Ring and also Stuart Tickle from AWE. Thanks, guys, for uh, well, thanks, Todd, especially for getting up so early for all, all actually not going to bed. And thanks, Stuart, for joining us. Um, I'd like to say make sure you're listening to all the other AWE breakfast show sessions this week, EI Live Interactive. And now uh, I'm going to go off and see if there's any records being delivered outside my uh, front door while I was on the air. So thanks, guys. And yeah, join us for the rest of the sessions all week. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Have a great afternoon. Thank you for watching the AWE Breakfast Show.